Hi folks, and welcome back. There's a smile on my face already today. First thing for me to check though, is the microphone working? <laughs> yes, it is, very good. I had an absolute mare yesterday. I finally decided to start recording part three of my beginner guide series. I recorded the whole thing, it took about two hours, quite a lot of planning went into it. Microphone wasn't switched on. <laughs> two hours of filming and uh, it just turned into a disaster in the end so uh, yeah microphone is working today which is good because we're going to be talking about all of my peppers which I've just brought up and first thing I need to do really is spend a little moment in the greenhouse uh, kind of making some space they're probably going to live on these benches for quite a long time but oh let's just have a quick update first shall we look at these right so these are the melons and honestly after our cold snap I thought they were on the way out. These should not, these are Minnesota midget and they should not have been brought out at all. Uh, this was a complete accident. I thought they were cucumbers because I'm, I'm a really experienced, smart gardener. I'm not really sure if you meant to wrap them around like that, but I've done it now. Um, the back one looking a little healthier. They're very yellow, very sad, <laughs> and probably could do with repotting, but I feel like it's a miracle that they pulled through. They looked like they were on the verge of death just the other day. The cucumbers, meanwhile, looking okay. They're doing okay, getting suited to their new home in the greenhouse. They can take a little, slightly cooler temperature than a melon. We've got another honey plus. They do look a little bit weird, the honey plus, but the main event, the chilies. The chilies. I'm gonna spend a bit of time talking about the varieties today as well, that's the plan. And I probably need to take the cover off this greenhouse in a greenhouse. I'm not really using it anymore. I don't really think it's necessary. The forecast is looking really good for the next two weeks. Loads of kind of eight or nine at a push. So I'm gonna take that cover off and then we get a bit more storage. And speaking of storage, just out here, I've got a new shelving unit. Oh, this isn't new. This has actually just been kind of hanging around in the shed. Uh, no, it was in the conservatory and we've got rid of it. We've had a bit of a reorganising. Look at this. I ordered some vinegar for my hot sauce the other day. Look what it came packaged in. It's so funny what you get excited about when you start an allotment. But look at all this shredded cardboard. Perfect for the compost. I genuinely <laughs> opened the box and I was like, yes, cool. That is brilliant. Let's clear a bit of space in here and then we can actually talk about the peppers. Oh, the peas look good as well, don't they? These got really hot the other day and I've got much better at watering them now and they're ready to go out. I need to get them out. Let's make some space, let's make some space. Oh, I'm so excited. Just the other day, I, I was feeling really smug about how well organized I've kept the greenhouses and it's just crazy how quickly everything builds up and it just becomes a complete mess. You just have to spend so much time keeping on top of it. But you know, one of those things. It's also one of those days today where everyone is down on the plot and the place just feels alive. It's really nice actually. One of the things about these plots is Historically, they've been quite neglected. We've not had many people. There's been a bit of a change recently. Loads of the vacant plots are getting taken over and it's just, it's just really nice. There's a really good energy in the air. A quick tidy later and it's looking much better. Look at all this space. Lots of things have just been, you know, crammed in, like shove it in there, chuck it under the carpet. <laughs> that's not a saying. Brush it under the carpet, that's the saying and the shelves fit perfectly. And we've got all of our kind of, this is a little space for my compost and my vermiculite and perlite and that kind of thing. So the idea is hopefully I can leave this as a bit of a, a potting up station. The little black tray over here, although I think that's quickly going to become too small for potting up a lot of these peppers. And I think it's time to start talking about the peppers, isn't it? I guess kind of the main thing on my mind, you know, the main question on my mind recently is, or, I don't know, I've been wondering, you know, how is the pepper season going? Is it good? Is it bad? And actually I found lots of things kind of, to kind of mank and moan about or be a little bit down about. You know, these are still in really, really small pots. It would have been nice if I could have left them in the greenhouse a few weeks ago, this kind of thing. But actually my peppers have never looked this good. This is the best start to a season I have ever had. They look super, super healthy compared to anything I've ever grown before. Some of them, like this champion pepper, are just really healthy, really tall. It's not leggy, it's tall. Some peppers just grow tall. That is great. Some of my Chinens varieties. Oh, look at this one. It's the red Bikino or Bikino red. Starting to get some flowers on it. This one's been potted up into a slightly bigger pot, but just look at the dark green foliage. You know, that looks like a really, really nice 
healthy plant. My Bueno Melata, another fantastic plant, a tall one, absolutely full of flowers, which is a real sign that this one wants potting on. Although not too many roots coming out the surface. I get a lot of questions from people saying that, uh, you know, my peppers are flowering, what do I do? And one of the things you should consider is what the habit of that pepper is. So a lot of the fast growing anums like uh, cayenne or jalapeno, Buena Malata, uh, they, they kind of want to start flowering a lot earlier than a lot of other plants. Most of the time it's a sign that your plant is root bound or maybe a little bit stressed and it's going, oh, it's time to make flowers and make chili peppers and make our fruit. Some peppers though, they do just have a bit of a habit of going to flower a little bit earlier. So it's not always a sign that there's something wrong and Buena Malata, definitely one of those. I've still got lots in the small pots. <laughs> Look at this tomato. This is one of my Crimson Crush uh, kind of side shoots and <laughs> very, very dry. A lot of these are in need of water. And generally, <laughs> generally it's a good picture, but there are one or two. This Dorset Naga, I remember potting this up and thinking this is a, this is a bit of a wing or a prayer. And uh, yeah, it's not looking too great, is it? But I love ones like this. I love to give them a chance and see what they do. It's gonna be lots of kind of little tips sprinkled throughout. And one thing you should get used to is knowing how well watered things are by the weight of their pots they, very quickly. It takes experience, it takes time but I can feel that this is so, so much lighter than this. This feels like a good way, it doesn't need any water. It's probably the best way rather than, um, with certain plants, you know, potted plants, you don't wanna be like digging around in the soil to see if it's moist. You can use a moisture meter, but really, I think it's just a really good habit to get used to the weight of plants. One that I'm really happy with is these hot goshu. This is a Korean pepper that was very kindly sent to me by Audrey from Real Food Comes Dirty. She's got, uh, she's got a great YouTube channel, but her website too is amazing. She has this catalog of everything that she's sown throughout the year and <laughs> it blows my mind. Amazing varieties as well, based in the US, but she sent me some of these Korean peppers and these were started much later than the majority of my peppers, which were started either the 1st of Jan for my Chinen's varieties, this is a good one too. Uh, we'll look at that in a minute. Oh, that one looks really good. Don't get distracted. Um, <laughs> so the Chinen's varieties were sown 1st of Jan and a lot of my other Annam varieties, my other ones, but the chili here, uh, this one was sown the 1st of February or around that time. So these Korean peppers, I think went in around the 1st of March. And one question I do want to think about as well is, is it too late to sow? peppers in May. So today, in fact, I'm going to sow some peppers as well, maybe back home under a propagator, just to be sure that they're going to germinate. And we're going to follow that throughout the course of this season too. And see, I am on the south of the UK, so a favourable condition. But I really want to see how a seed planted in the start of May, which is really, I think, the cutoff for when you can start a chilli, going to see how that's going to do. But yeah, these looking really, really healthy and sown much later than everything else. But I've really been quite impressed with how they've, they're kind of catching up really quite quickly. One of the chilies that I've struggled with a lot this year and have always kind of struggled with a little bit, some of the sugar rush varieties. This one is a sugar rush stripey. I know lots of you are growing this one too. Some amazing looking pods. And it doesn't look like the strongest pepper at the moment, does it? But actually when I potted this pepper on, it looked like it was on the verge of death. So it's made a really strong recovery. Just here, you can see the second tray and all of these have been potted up to this kind of medium. Wow, that, that is really light. I've been neglecting these slightly over the past few days, but all of these have been planted into those slightly bigger pots. And these just look so, so healthy. One thing I should mention, I was a little bit, um, maybe kind of skeptical about silver grow. Uh, the compost that I bought, my first experiences with it, a lot of seedlings seemed a little bit slow. I really think that was the weather and not the compost. And at this point, I'm pretty much evangelical about silver grow. It is really, really good. The peppers are looking super healthy. All my other pep uh, all my other seedlings are looking really healthy. And I think it was probably the slow growth due to the weather and the temperature much more than the compost. So since, I mean, these got off to a rocky start as well. If you've missed some of the earlier videos I did, I'll link them up here, but whoa, it was pretty touch and go. I used some dodgy New Horizon compost and the plants were not loving it. So the first month was a bit of a write off. And here I've got one that is just, oh, I've really got my fingers crossed for this one. You can see it's looking quite yellow, looking a bit pallid. 
just not a particularly healthy plant. And this is a seven pot bubble gum. I tried to grow this last year as well and I didn't have much success. I got one plant to the end of the season. It's very difficult to germinate. Um, I got some new seed this year and once again, I only had a couple of plants come through. One of the seedlings dies and this is my last remaining seven pot bubble gum. Extremely hot pepper, very, very cool looking too. I really hope I can get this to the end of the season. It's not looking too great, but it is still in one of these small pots, so we'll see. Oh, it's really good spending a bit of time talking about these. This is the part of the video where I normally do a quick little plug for my Patreon and ask you to subscribe and all that kind of thing, but today I'm gonna ask you a little bit of a different favor. My, what, my wonderful fiance Jess, you'll know, you've seen her in some of the videos. Every now and then I can drag her up to the garden and get her to help out but she's been working on something very different, and that is a, a novella. So she's just about to release her first ever book, and it's really difficult when you're a new author to kind of break in to the space. And lots of you, this won't be for you, but if you're a bit of a reader and you're interested in a cutesy little romance novel, and I don't mean romance euphemistically, I'm pretty sure it's like PG rated, it's all above board. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for her book that is coming out on Tuesday, I believe. It's called Stormcloud, and oh, I'd just be so thankful if you go and check it out. Maybe consider ordering it or just reading it on Kindle or however books work these days. But one thing I do want to talk about is the right timing for bringing chili peppers out, and they're very similar to tomatoes, so you really want to be aiming for low temperatures of above 10 degrees. I talked about this very recently in a video, but I did bring up some peppers much earlier than the rest, and let's have a look at how they're doing compared to the ones that have been at home. Almost as if I planned it. I've got on the left the peppers that I brought out a little bit earlier, and I mean, they're looking okay, aren't they? Look at this melon, get out of here. Let me turn this around. They're looking healthy. They are healthy plants, they're still surviving, they're doing okay, but those are examples of Buena Malata that have been brought out a bit too early, basically, and what's happened is the cold nighttime temperatures have stalled the growth. And next door, this is an example of a plant that has been kept in ideal conditions under a good grow light with nice, stable temperatures. And look at that difference. It is stark, isn't it? And this is really why you do want to be cautious with your temperatures and when you bring your plants out because, you know, there's a few weeks of extra growth on here at least. And with chili peppers, they're a really long season crop. So every week of growth is quite important, and that's just the Buena Malata. Here we have two raw it peppers. It's a weird name, raw it, raw it, raw it. It's R-A-W-I-T, like that. But the one on the left brought out a little bit early, and to be honest, this one looks a little bit healthier than the Buena Malata. I should say it's not a completely fair comparison with the Buena because I did repot the Buena Malata, but you can see here these two are in the same exact pot, and the main difference can be seen on the stem here with all this lovely bushy growth that's coming out of the stem on the right and on the left. It's just much slower, much slower growth. And we have the exact same demonstration here with the Kashmiri pepper, a nice tall growing one. The one on the right has been kept indoors a little bit longer, same pot size, potted up at the same time. And the one on the left just looks, it's less dense, isn't it? It's just behind. It's been slowed down by those cold, nighttime temperatures. So I'm fairly confident now that it's going to be safe to bring these out, but you do need to make sure that your nighttime temperatures are pretty close to 10 degrees Celsius. Nine degrees you can probably get away with, especially if you're in a greenhouse. I've got lows of eight degrees coming up and I'm really not too worried. The, the greenhouses do hold a little bit more heat. I do lots of things like putting as much water in here as I can. The flagstones that are on the ground absorb a lot of heat and radiate them back as well. This is very much the warmer greenhouse. These ones, these have been subjected to around kind of five, four or five degrees lows and they're okay. You know, they've had a few weeks in the greenhouse. They could be much, much worse. So, you know, it's a decision for you to make really whether or not you want to sacrifice a few weeks growth. You're going to stall your plant a little bit. You know, that's a decision for you to make about when you bring them up and how much pressure there is for you to get them outside. You know, are they under grow lights? Are you spending lots of money on electric? These are all very quite personal decisions and I don't think it's the end of the world if you bring them up a touch early. These guys have still got the majority of May, June, July and August to really kick into growing mode and 
then kind of around the end of August is when you really start to get your first proper harvest. So you should be cautious, but you can get away with it a little bit, I think. I think it's okay to push it a little bit. Up here there are some really, really exciting peppers to talk about as well. One of which is this, the golden nugget, which just has amazing variegated leaves. I've not grown many peppers that have this kind of variegation, so I'm a bit of a sucker for it. It's novel, it makes me really happy every time I see it, and I just think, oh, that's funky. Really, really excited to see how this develops and matures. There's two of these that I've got, and the second one looks dramatically different. This could almost be a different plant. The variegation is ne not nearly as strong. It's a much taller plant as well, and it's got lots of purpling as well, which I'm fairly sure is the plant itself, not sunburn or anything like that. So really, really interesting. And I have to give a mention to this, my Dorset Naga plant. It's not looking its best at the moment. It really needs a water, but this has been Oh, it's been a breathtaking plant. Probably the prettiest chili plant I've ever grown. I posted a picture on Instagram the other day. I never post pictures on Instagram. So, you know, if I see something and I think that's going on Instagram, <laughs> you know, it's pretty good. You know, it's really taken me. And I've never actually grown the Dorset Naga before. It's a pepper. If you're a pepper head, you'll be very familiar with this variety. It's bred by Sea Spring Seeds down in Devon. And over the years, they're not in Devon, they're in Dorset. That's why it's called the Dorset Naga. <laughs> Whoops, uh, you know what I mean. So over the years, it's become a bit more accustomed to the UK kind of growing climate, I think. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous pepper. Chili Chomp is doing an amazing build as well. I'll put a link in the description to what he's planning because he grows some monster chili plants. Absolutely extraordinary Dorset Nagas. Mine are gonna be nowhere near as big or as tall as his but I'm still hoping for a really good plant at the end of the season from these. And speaking of Chili Chump, check out this Chili Chump Piri Piri. Uh, Chili Chump has an amazing YouTube channel. I talk about it all the time. Everything I learned about peppers, I learned from him pretty much. And this is a Piri Piri plant that he's been breeding over the years. And it is a fantastically strong grower. The amount of bushy, dense growth coming out of this stem, it wins the award for the bushiest plant in my greenhouse at the moment. Very. Very cool. It's been so cool seeing this explode as well. Every time you look at it, it's grown. It's like a triffid, you know? So really, really nice plant. In fact, after spending a bit of time looking around, I really just think that all of my Chinens varieties, my hot peppers are looking really, really healthy. This Seven Prop Primo just looks amazing. This variety is called Trinity, and I found this one. This is another one from Sea Spring Seeds, and I found the seeds for this at a stall at the Dorset Chili Festival, and it just looks fantastic. I as well have some butcher lokis on the go that just look amazing. Starting the plants at the 1st of Jan, I think was a really good decision. Look at this tiny, tiny little pepper. It's actually got quite a nice compact growth to it, but this is my Kangstar Lemon Starburst, and it's one that I've wanted to grow for years. I planted this mid-Feb, so much later than most of my other Chinens varieties, and <laughs> it did not get off to a good start. It looked just like the sickest, most pallid seedling, and I did not have much hopes for it, but it pulled through. I planted quite a few seeds, and this is the only one that germinated, so fingers crossed I can finally try the Kangstar Lemon Starburst. Kangstar, another amazing chili grower and YouTuber, link in the description. He gives these away for free. It's, it's so, so cool. It's a strain that he's bred himself, and he said he never wants to make a penny from it. He just wants to make sure that people share it freely. So I might be able to do a giveaway or something for that if the seeds come to fruition. Although, I'll be honest, I'm not expecting the healthiest plant from this one. I've just spent a bit of time basically organizing the plants, getting them all together because they've been split up. Some have been at home, some have been here. I've been a bit confused about exactly what varieties I've got and how many numbers of each plant and that kind of thing. And I'm really pleasantly surprised about how much space there is in the greenhouse at the moment. They are still in quite small pots, but I'm gonna give you a quick whip round and I just, I haven't stopped smiling. There is something about peppers, and I say this in almost every video I do about them, but they're just so cool. They're just such a cool plant. I absolutely adore growing them. And when people ask why I get so many peppers and why I grow so many, truthfully, I don't know the answer. I just, I just love them. They just bring me, they just bring me so much happiness. I just, they just put a smile on my face. I don't know why, I just, they're so, so cool. Putting this extra set of shelves in the greenhouse, I tell you what, it's really 
I don't know, it's just transformed how it feels. It feels so much better, so much nicer. And look at all of this space. I've got some of the mostly smaller chilies over here now, some of the Korean varieties. This one is called Bert. I showed you this earlier and I know I'm gonna have a comment. Why is it called Bert? I have no idea. I don't know why it's called Bert. I don't know if the guy who bred it was called Bert or I don't know, is he called Bert the chili? But I do like it either way. It's definitely a bit funky. And the plan is I'm gonna definitely, well, what is my plan with potting up? I'm not 100% sure. I think what I normally do is I do it all at once and it turns into like a mega marathon and it's all a bit stressful and a bit much. Um, when I put them in their final pots last season, oh my days, it, I think I came up around two o'clock in the afternoon, it was baking hot and I wasn't finished until about nine o'clock at night and that's when they were going into their full-on final pots of say 10 litres. I have lots of little blue pots which are 2.5 litres and that is probably what I'm going to be putting these into. A lot of people have got their chilies in their final pots already and to be honest that is ideal. The one main thing that I've got wrong this year is pot size. I think it would be better if all of these had gone into this medium sized pot, maybe a little bit earlier, but you know, I, I did get, it's tricky, it's tricky. Actually, um, I said that it would have been nice to pot them on sooner, but I don't know if it would have been because I haven't had the space at home. So what I have, what I have got right this season is I've potted on at the right time for the vast majority of the plants. There's not many like this one. This is one of my Bert chilies and it could have done with being potted up maybe a week or two ago, really. You get a feel for when they're really gonna be starting to fill out their pots. But generally, I say 80% of the plants I did pot on into those kind of medium-sized pots at the right time. It would be a bit much for me to take a plant like this and put it into a 10 litre pot. It would eventually catch up, but it's better to pot them on stepwise for a little while. And so the next size pots, I've got these blue 2.5 litre pots, and very soon most of these will be going in. But at the same time, I'm cautious about putting them under too much stress because if I bring them out into the greenhouse and pot them all on at the same time, that's kind of multiple factors that they've got to deal with. So I'm gonna let them get acclimatized for maybe a week or so in the greenhouse and then I'll start to think about potting on. This is my chin end section. And oh, just look at how good these plants look. There's a seven pot bubblegum in the front there, Dorset Naga, top left, my butcher Lokias. Hot chocolate, another cool looking pepper from Sea Spring Seeds. That is a, look at that, that is a gorgeous plant. I think that's a Trinity. Yeah, Trinity. And then I've got one seven pot Primo at the back, uh, which is looking pretty healthy. I'm really happy with all of these chin end varieties. And this one, oh, I didn't talk about this one yet. I absolutely cannot pronounce this one. I've just called it OPW on, <laughs> on the label and I'll flash up the name of this one. But I know a lot of growers, a lot of pepperheads have had trouble growing and germinating these. So that's a little bit, you know, a little bit of a success story for JB there. Really, really happy. <laughs> Look at this. Oh dear me. And then over here, it's a similar picture. What I have done is I've done a little label on the ones I bought to the greenhouse early, I've just written GHE on their label. So it'll be interesting to follow those throughout the season. And then over here, we've got the Kashmiri, the Golden Nugget, Chili Chump Piri Piri, the Champion. And over here, you can actually see, these are most of my Sugar Rush varieties on the right. And hopefully you can just see, they do look a little bit weaker than the rest. The Sugar Rush Long Peach and the Sugar Rush Stripey, they are a tricky beggar. They're my favorite plants to grow and this is my favorite video to make as well. It's such a relief to know that they're kind of in their forever home now. Uh, it, is, it is maybe wise, you know, if you've got chili peppers on the go to just hold off on the potting on for a little while just in case the forecast turns and you can take them back indoors, but I'm just so happy. If you've got any chili pepper questions, do drop them in the comments below and maybe check out the Patreon as well because if you've got chili pepper questions that you definitely want answered, ask them through Patreon and you get kind of prioritized access. I get a lot of comments and I'm quite busy so I can't get to them all unfortunately. I will put a link in the description as well to Stormcloud. Please do go and check out Jesse's novella if that's the sort of thing you're into. Maybe pass it on to your partner if you're not. <laughs> thank you ever so much for watching and an extra special thank you to my chili pepper tier patrons. My arm is about to fall off, oh my god. Sometimes the camera is really heavy. <laughs> well, I'm just completely gave away, embarrassing. But an extra special thank you to my Chili Pepper Tier patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, and Michael. You are fantastic. Thank you ever so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you again next time.